Oh no, I don't give a fuck about them now. Like me. Sorry, I don't give a fuck about Like me. But who are you? Just another nigga with a strap. It don't take rocket science to shoot. You don't know shit about getting bricks out. You probably still work true for true. You don't know shit about on your blood because you paid your bills with all that loot. How about your baby about to be born and he don't got pampers, wipes, or food? How about your mama fucking your best friend and y'all both just finished school? But it's okay. She thinks it's cool. You're in her way. It's time you move. And you just paid all her damn bills. So you feel like a fool. So what do you suggest I do? You think you know? You got no clue. So please don't tell me what you think. I, I don't give a fuck of them like me, like me. I say I don't give a fuck of them like me. Oh no, I don't give a fuck of them like me. Sorry, I don't give a fuck of them like me. I don't give a fuck oh, yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to AJ's Dead. Yes. Last time I talked to you guys, it was on Wednesday. Well, a whole lot of things happened through that day. Um, Another African American have gotten shot down who had a mental problem in California. I mean, I don't know how long these cops or these Caucasians really think that we're just going to sit back and allow you to kill our people and think, okay, we're going to kill a deed, do the dumb, and we're going to do this Martin Luther King Jr. bull crap. Nope. No, we're not going to do it. If you think you're the only one scrap and you think you're the only one, um, sitting back here and trying to um, allow things to continue to happen, you think we're just going to sit back and twiddle our thumbs? You are insane if you think you're going to keep on killing our people. We do have unconscious people that exist these days. That's on them. But it's a lot of us, like myself, that do exist and do know how things and focus on what is going on. I'm like, I'm like, totally, are you, I just can't believe these, these Caucasians, these white supremacists really think that you're going to, we're going to sit back and allow you to do whatever. You, you are in the police department. You, you are in the government, government officials. You are government officials. You are all these people that have high positions and was voted in some African Americans who didn't that you hid that like you always do when you hide things, um, like you hide your face behind. Cause I'm gonna get on this gorilla mask, and I'm gonna get on the and I'm talking about the Ku Klux Klan. How you hide your face under a sheet, but you try not to show your face. Some of you guys are bold. You're coming out and actually showing your face. Most of you are not. You don't want nobody to see your face. So you tend to hide it. It was um, a young, young boy. I'm going to call him a boy just like y'all are called my, um, my brothers, um, boys. A young boy who happened to be Caucasian um, in um, Tennessee had on a gorilla mask. And that's why I say to belittle a race so you can try to keep your power is outrageous. Now, when we was in, when we was in power, we didn't belittle you guys. Not at all. 
all. So, I want to try to bring this up. I want to bring this video up. And show you how this young man, he was, I doubt anything happened, but they say he was suspended from school, um, um, from college. He was in college. And, um, and um, I was looking at this young white um, girl. I'm going to play a lot of videos. I want you guys to hear things. I don't want to speak of it. I want you guys to hear it. So this guy was in Tennessee and he tend to have a gorilla. I, I don't know where the hell they get this gorilla from of trying to compare us African Americans as gorillas. If you compare us, you think about the animal kingdom. They are, gorillas are the strongest and most powerful human being out there. But where you get this fucking gorilla from, I don't know. You always call a monkey and stuff like that. But it's amazing that you would take, you know, animals, animal um, organs don't go along with human beings. But when your ass is dying and you need some organs, you decide you will take an African American organ. You may not know it, but why do African Americans donate their organs and your ass will take it? You may later on find out, but you you will take it. An animal um, organ, you shouldn't want an animal organ. They don't even fit in human beings in real life right now. They don't even fit in human beings. So why would you take any organs from us? We're animals, you say. I don't know where you get it from. And the ideal, you just wanted everything. I know where you got it from because everything what you do or say to belittle our race is to make you feel better about yourself. That's all it is. If people don't get it, everything when they're trying to say these ends here and these ends here and they act like animals and they da 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 da. It's to make yourself feel better. To make yourself feel better. That's all it is. That's that's all it is. To make yourself feel better. That's all it is. As long as you feel better, it's okay. We don't care if you belittle. You don't care if you belittle somebody else. You don't care. But you tell us we don't have more. We don't have lower love. If we didn't have love, you wouldn't be in the position you're in now. We allow your asses to come in our life. But I want y'all to hear this. East Tennessee. This is what happened. On the campus of East yeah. Tennessee, guy dressed up in a gorilla suit. And I know you guys have seen this. Hey, what you at? What you at? I don't play. I'm going to show oh. this on Periscope. What you out here for? I'm here to support you guys. Oh, you I'm supporting us? All the way. I appreciate it. Can I see your bag? Can I see your bag real quick? Uh, you can't hold it, but you can take a look at it. This is what happens. This is this is this is what happens right there. No, I'm good on the bananas, bro. No, I'm straight. Now he's trying to no, give the uh, guy gave him I gave it with bananas. <laughs> look, this is all we doing. Everything, doing let me tell you something, everything that Caucasians say that right we here, are man. or we like, that's what man, they like. This, this, is, this, this, is, this, is, this is what we got to live with, bro. It's a bunch of 19, 20 year olds out here, and we got to watch folks like this hopping up in our faces on board. I'm just supposed to look at this, though, so I'm not supposed to punch this dude in his head. I'm not going to, but I just want y'all to know that I'm not supposed to, right? The police said right there, and if I punch him in his head, I'm going to go to prison, right? 
but he can come out here and just flaunt in my face and he can come out here and do that to me, right? It's the America we live in, y'all. And I'm so glad that this happened. So I can just give like a really good example of what it's like. My hands are shaking and I'm so angry right now. The sign says Man. He's giving them a banana. Try to get them a banana with a rope on it. All they doing is standing out on the campus saying "Black Lives Matter." It all it doesn't say all he lives okay doesn't matter. He got a mask on but his face. he have a mask on. They're just protesting in a peaceful manner. That's what the First Amendment says. As long as you assemble, assemble, have an assembly of a peaceful manner, that's okay. Now a lot is for. It's four things in on the uh, First Amendment, that like and they, that's all they're doing. They're doing one of them, just protesting. And I'm God come out there with a gorilla suit on and, and have banana <laughs> and have a bag with the rebel flag that... I mean, um, they're going to take, the, they're gonna take the, um, the mask off his face. And he's a freshman. He was charged, though. He was charged. Thank y'all for being we was. I was the only one not facing. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. <laughs> and they finally took the mask off. Look at that little face, boy. 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 Uh oh, he over there. Show it. He over there, scared. What happened to him? He's over there, so scared. Where you at? You go to school here? Hi, an East Tennessee State now University student on. has been placed on interim suspension, and it comes after authorities said he dressed up as a gorilla during a Black Lives Matter event. News Channel 11's Elizabeth Kubel is on ETSU's campus tonight with reaction from students and the university. That's right. I want you guys to take a look behind me. A relatively peaceful scene out here at the fountain right now at this hour. But a few hours ago, someone did try to come here and disturb the peace. That's because according to an ETSU police report that we actually obtained within the hour, that's because um, the report shows that a Black Lives Matter peaceful protester, peaceful protest, actually someone came and disturbed the peace wearing blue jean overalls, a white t-shirt, and a black gorilla mask. That report says he had a brown burlap sap that had a rebel flag and a marijuana leaf on it. He had a rope and bananas, which he was handing out to students. And we actually talked to some of those students who were out here earlier today. Let's take a listen to what they had to say. We feel disrespected and that I was below him, but I had to use that and put it back in my head and just come back with a calm, peaceful, positive uh, outlet. Because if I would have reacted any other way, that's exactly what he was looking for. Now, ETSU's president, Dr. Brian Nolan, did hold a news conference here about an hour and a half ago addressing these, the students' actions, saying that they do not reflect the university at all. They were incomprehensible and just completely inappropriate. Let's take a listen as well to what Dr. Brian Nolan had to say. Uh, this student's actions did not define who we are as a university. The actions of this one individual are counter to all of the things that we believe in as an institution. The student who was arrested, Dr. Brian Nolan says, is a student here. He's a freshman at ETSU. He has been placed on interim suspension. And as he told us in that news conference that, um, actually, excuse me, according to that police report, he is being charged with, um, with civil rights intimidation. Live at ETSU, Elizabeth Kubel, News Channel 11, in your quarter. And basically, that's what it was. He really wanted someone to really argue with him or fight him and he really violated those those young men and women civil rights so yeah that's basically and he really wanted somebody he wanted to prove a point he wanted to say that we're violent everything i'm gonna say it again every time a car case is sit up there and said that we are violent they need to think about all the things that they have done in the past. Every violent act that we do is what they do. They have done. 
We are not violent people. We have never been violent people. Until you provoke us. And sometimes we still sit back because you've heard the fine example. They didn't do anything. They could have. But they didn't do anything because he, he really wanted that reaction from those young men and women. And they, he didn't get it. To come out there and dress like a gorilla to belittle a race that you call us monkeys and you smile in our face like he said. Like you showed, I showed you that he might be walk around every day with, uh, with most of those students. And first thing they say, like I had somebody on Periscope says, I'm not a racist. And when that young man got shot in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the first thing came out of his mouth, well, after, well, the second thing, after he said he wasn't a racist, the second thing was, he was on PCP. And they don't have, they shown that he's not, he wasn't on PCP. How would you know he was on PCP? That was an excuse for that young lady to, and I slightly say lady, that was an excuse for her to shoot him and gun him down. That is always an excuse. It's always an excuse for any Caucasian to gun an Af African American down. The first thing they will put on there, well, they had a bad record. That record would be about 10 or 15 years ago. That's an excuse to gun down. That's why I know Missouri put this stand your ground law out here. So now people protest, they can just say, I was I felt threatened. But a white person, a Caucasian, can run at a cop. With a gun, with a knife, and somehow they don't feel threatened. They can shoot at them, and somehow they don't feel threatened. Just like this Caucasian who shot nine African Americans. They gave this guy, they, they put him in there, like, put him in there, nice and gentle. You hungry, boo boo? Let me take you to uh, Burger King. After he shot nine African Americans. <clears throat> enough is enough. You treat us like we're nothing. But you want us to respect your ass? Are you insane? First thing you get up there and say, blue lives not fuck. Blue lives. And I'm about to say something that really going to piss me off. Really, it's not going to piss me off because I'm already pissed off. I'm tired of blue lives matter. I'm tired of white lives matter. It's time for our lives matter. Our lives, black lives matter, should have been mattering through century time. You guys took everything from us. And every time we stand up and try to get something, you make sure you take it back again. So we wouldn't get up. Every time we try to fight and get out of the sandbox or get out of the uh, mole hole, you come along and throw some more dirt on us. But now you want us to kumbaya your ass and hold your hand when things are going wrong, when somebody else overseas bomb your places, you want us to come by and hold your hand and we're all together? No, I will not do it. I just can't do it. Nope. Oh. <sighs> you 
you want me to love you while you beating the shit out of me. A dog or any animal that you compare us would not allow you to continue to do the things that you're doing to us. Let's see what this young Caucasian woman says. And it's, it's about the truth of what she's saying. Just because you have a stressful job, cops, it doesn't give you the right to kill us. I, and I always said, it's not all Caucasian. It's most of Caucasians who are white supremacists, who support Trump. If you don't think you're a racist, you're sadly mistaken you are if you support if you support Trump. Because that's all Trump preached is hatred. He talked about hatred in his campaign. I've been seeing a lot of videos on my news feed lately that oh, have had me pretty confused. I mean, <clears throat> I'm no lawyer or paralegal, but I have watched a lot of Law & Order, and I've also seen The Purge. So I think I have a fairly good understanding of how our legal system works and doesn't work. If you're unfamiliar with the American legal system, I'm going to break it down for you in five easy steps. First, an officer observes you partaking in illegal behavior. You're arrested and taken into custody. Bummer. Two, you're booked, which usually includes you being photographed, fingerprinted, and then you provide your personal information. Three, the prosecutor usually has about 72 hours to file charges against you. That's the speedy trial part you remember from fifth grade. Then you have an arraignment, which is the part where you go to court and plead guilty or not guilty. After that, you're placed in jail, but you can usually post bail. Then you get a lawyer, you have a fair trial in front of a jury of your peers, and they say whether you go to Litchfield or not. It's just like the Hamptons, only fucking horrible. Seems pretty simple, right? Oh, I forgot one thing. Unless you're black. Then they just stop at step one, you don't have to go through the whole fair trial thing, and uniformed police officers are allowed to publicly execute you wherever's most convenient for them. Or at least that's what I've been seeing a lot of lately. Now, most of America has collectively been saying, what is going on? But I've still seen a few people say, what's the big deal? So I took a moment to reach out to those people. And here's what I've found. I've heard people say that what happened to Alton Sterling was okay because police officers risk their lives every day. So do firefighters. And I'm pretty sure if we saw some firefighters just let a fire rage on, their fellow firefighters would be like, Hey, man, what are you doing? People died because you're not doing your job correctly. And you're making the rest of us who work really hard and risk our lives every day look bad. So don't do that anymore and maybe let's just play it by the books. Yes, there are good cops. I come from a family full of them and I promise you they are out there. But as Joan Stewart said, you can still have high regard for police enforcement and want them to be held to a high standard. Having a high-stress job does not excuse anyone from murder. Just because you put a uniform on to enforce the law does not make you exempt from it. I am pro-cop, but I'm also pro-Black Lives Matter, and that's okay. Then I heard some people say that Elton Sterling had priors, so maybe he sort of, like, deserved it? Ah, uh, I've seen you guys before. You're the ones that said that if the girl at Stanford didn't drink so much, she probably wouldn't have been raped. Am I right? Happy to see you guys are here and as vocal as ever, but please review the first minute of this video where I outline the five steps of what happens when you get arrested in the American legal system. And just in case this wasn't clear, no matter how much you drink, you shouldn't get raped. And no matter how many priors you have, you shouldn't be publicly executed by uniformed police officers. Then I heard some people say that there are consequences to resisting arrest. So I took the time to look them up in this book. And nowhere in here does it say that the consequences for resisting arrest are public execution. It does say you should be afforded a trial in front of a jury of your peers, blah, blah, blah. Everyone deserves due process. <laughs> the law, am I right? Then I heard some folks say, well, if he followed the law, he would have been fine. I thought it'd be fun at this point in the video to play a game to see how well you guys have been paying attention. Okay, question one. Your name's Philando Castile. You've been pulled over for having a broken tail light. You've told the police officer that you have a legally registered firearm in the car. Do you A, expect to survive this routine traffic stop, or B, deserve to be publicly executed in a car in front of your girlfriend and her four-year-old child in the back seat? 
Oh, you guys are good. Okay, here's the second one. Your name's Sandra Bland. You're pulled over for a minor traffic infraction. Do you expect to A, survive this routine traffic stop, or B, be arrested, jailed, die in jail, have your death shrouded in a cloud of mystery, and have nobody held accountable? Okay, last one. Your name's Eric Garner. You're allegedly illegally selling cigarettes. Do you A, deserve to be treated with respect and if arrested, granted a fair trial, or B, deserve to be murdered immediately? If you answered A to all of these questions, congrats! You have a basic understanding of the American legal system and a moral compass. Proud of you. If you hesitated to answer A to any of the questions above, I'm gonna guess that you're one of the people saying, don't all lives matter? Yes. Yes, all lives do matter. Blue lives matter, gay lives matter, brown lives matter, white lives matter, black lives matter. But when people say, don't all lives matter, what they're not often grasping is that right now in this country, not all lives are being valued equally. Everyone should be able to live free of persecution and prosper in this country, but that is not what's happening. Based on data from the Center on Juvenile and Criminal Justice, young blacks are 4.5 times more likely to be killed by police than any other age or any other racial group. The disparity in this country isn't just based on the justice system either. Black families are seven times more likely to be homeless than white families. The typical white family in America earns around $50,000 annually. The typical black family earns around $32,000 annually. So yes, all lives matter. But right now, in this country, black lives are being valued less, and that's unacceptable. Then I heard people say, well, what about the officers in Dallas? My heart aches for the officers in Dallas, but it aches no less for the families of Alton and Philandra. We must always condemn disregard for human life. But I've seen the fear in the eyes of families of police officers when their loved one goes out the door to report for duty. However, I've also seen the fear in a black mother's eyes when her child goes outside the door to play. We must own up to the reality of systemic racism in this country. In 2016 alone, blacks continue to be shot by police at 2.5 times the rate of whites. That is a statistic. That is real. And that is not okay. I want to take this last minute to say that if any of the concepts in this video were difficult for you to understand, for example, racial inequality or police brutality or why both of those things are not okay, please take the time to reach out to me. You can call me, DM me, send me a message here, write a comment in the YouTube video section. Please get in touch with me because it is imperative that you understand that we as white people are outrageously privileged in this society and why things like Wearing a hoodie or having a broken taillight don't result in death for us, but they do for other people in this country, specifically of color. And that's not okay. As always, I'm Taylor Ham, and you're welcome. Okay. So, I hope you guys, because you can't take it from me, you got it from a Caucasian female. Maybe you can... Get that concept instead of saying all lives matter. And you can understand that we're not trying to down your race because you already have white privileges. We're trying to let you know that we have no damn privileges at all because of the color of our skin. Don't even judge us by our character of our country, the country of our character. You don't even judge that. You're judged by the color of our skin. We could be the most intelligent, educated person. And I always quote this from President Johnson, what he said. And I'm not going to quote it today because you guys, if you've been listening to me, you'll know what, I, what he said. I say it all the time. Always. So, you guys continue to say all lives matter. All lives matter. Uh huh. Love saying it. It's crazy when they say it. No, I don't believe in that. That's just separating the race. So I'm not. Well, this race has been separated for fucking years. So now the sudden we as African Americans saying all lives, uh, black lives matter. You have a problem with that one because you want to be included in something. You've been included in it for years. You have your white privileges. 
You could go around and walk in a store with a hoodie on and nobody wouldn't question you. You, wouldn't have, you don't have to worry about getting shot. You don't have to worry about sending your child out or tell your child, behave like this. Hopefully you will come back alive. We have to tell our kids every day. Watch out. Behave. Listen to the cop. If you see a cop, he asks you a question, you tell him, no, I cannot talk to you. You need to talk to me, uh, my parents present, have to be present before you question me. They, they know the Constitution, and they're still questioning young kids, knowing that they aren't supposed to question them without their parents. Cops out here doing that. What gives you the right to question these young kids? I saw this. This cop and a young man stopped him and said, you don't even supposed to question these kids without their parents. He got pissed off. Pissed off. Pissed off now. So we're going to look at, listen to, because LeBron said he was scared for his son to go out. His son is getting older now. And he's scared for his son's life. And that's what we have to do is train our kids. And I hate the word train. I'm, I'm going to take that word out because I can't stand the fucking word. I say teach our kids that when you walk out the door, what I just said. Babe, watch out. Listen to the cops. If he want to question you, tell him you need to call. Don't stick your hands in your pockets. Don't. Don't just hold your hands up. Even if you hold your hands up like the young man in Tulsa, he held his hand up and still died. Still died. The one in California recently, he held his hand up and still died. He was, Well, he had a point in his hand. He had no gun in his hand. One shot him with a gun, the white cop, and the other black cop shot him with a taser. What the hell? Why are you shooting um, um, a gun if you're going to shoot a taser? You just forgot about the taser and y'all going straight at the gun. That's LeBron why Missouri have a about to it. Police brutality and the images. He says he's going to stand for the anthem, but here's LeBron James. You know, I look at my Colin son being four years Cow removed from Herd. driving his own Colin car and being Cow able to Herd. leave the house on his own. Want to respond and, to and what it's a scary uh, LeBron said. thought right now to think, you know, if my son gets pulled over, you know, and you tell your kids, if you just apply and you just listen to the to the police that, you know, they will be respectful and things will work itself out. And you see these videos that continue to come out. It's a scary, it's a scary ass situation that if my son calls me and said he's been pulled over, that I'm not that confident that things are going to go well and my son is going to return home. It's tough being a parent right now when you have a, a preteen. Yeah, it's a real thing. Yeah. It's a real thing for black parents more than white parents, and white parents, Greg Popovich talked about that yesterday. People will say, statistically, though, statistically, you can't distill kids down to statistics. I'm a parent. I'm not objective about my kids. I'm terrified if they go out late at night and go to a concert. I can't sleep until they get home. You can't ask a black parent in America to boil all the police profiling just down to a statistic. And the people that say they're over-dramatizing it. You're the same conservative white male <laughs> who watches Fox News all day and thinks exactly. ISIS is going to behead you. Exactly. Statistically, there is no chance of that happening. Statistically, there's a much greater chance that a black child will be profiled in a car. Mm -hmm. So spare me on the, or the statistics say, people in Los Angeles know. Black families and parents have lived through this. We're not saying it happens with every cop. We're not saying it happens every moment of every day. But in Kansas City, you have no chance of being beheaded by ISIS. That's right. There is police profiling going on this second in Kansas City and Indianapolis and Dallas and Minnesota and Seattle. So when I hear people say, oh, the, the, the dramatizing statistics, if you got kids, that fear, that terror that black families are going through, it's real. And you don't have any experience with it. I don't have any experience with it. But what LeBron's saying, he's not saying that to gain attention. 
this is not a this is not a protest. That was as real as you're going to get from LeBron. He was asked a question off the cuff. wasn't trying to be an activist. He said, "Man, I'm scared." LeBron James got a zillion dollars. He's big and strong. He's this, this, this. He's scared. And black parents have a right to be. Don't distill it down to a, you know, stat. Well, you know, statistically, they shouldn't worry about... Statistically, there is zero chance ISIS is a threat to us. And you turn on conservative radio, and that's all you hear all day. All you hear. Okay? That's all you hear. Did you hear it? Now, you just heard it from a Caucasian male. I don't know what convinc- will convince you. I know you guys, most uh, most Caucasian have a closed mind. Not all, and I always said, and I have always said that on here. I uh, I don't like the white supremacist. Every time you turn around, every time you turn around, that some Caucasian, like the the, the Caucasian just said just a moment ago, and and the young lady just said a moment ago. You guys continue to sit up here and say, oh, you need to obey the law. Uh, oh, you need to um, do right. Uh, oh, oh, you cause problems. All oh, this and all that. And you say this all the time like it's not killing. They are killing our people. And we can do everything, everything what they want us to do. And we still wind up dying. Castile is the biggest one right there. This man pulled him over because he had a wide nose, he said. Wide nose. Shot him dead. He warned them, I'm going to the back of my back to get my gun is right there and I'm not trying to shoot you. He warned them. Still shot him. Still shot him. That's why you want to belittle a race so you can keep the power. And it's sad that some of you Caucasians that's actually there for us, and I'm going to play a Trump little statement um, on here as well, is that, that you're going to get caught up in this race war that is brewing. Because I'm getting to to the point that I don't even want a Caucasian to say nothing to me. I have an attitude now. I respect women, I adore women, and I go out with women. I respect women more than I respect men. I respect women so much. You treat women with respect. Uh, I can't say that either. All right, good, all right. Somewhere yeah, in between. I, I do. I treat, Guys, women. I treat women with great respect. Well, have I been so bad with women? I don't think so. The only time I've ever made money with women was when I brought the Miss Universe. She had a little problem during the middle where she gained a little weight. I don't think so. Yeah, she's probably right. I don't think so. Okay. She gained a massive amount of weight. And uh, it was it was a real problem. Trump demanded that she lose weight, calling her an eating machine on the Howard Stern show. He even took her to a gym, and invited the media to watch her work out. Slowly go down towards your toes. She called me like uh, Miss Piggy, Miss Hal Kitty. She weighed 118 pounds or 117 pounds, and she went up to 160 or 70. So this is somebody that likes to eat. She's gotten a little bit large. I would say this, I don't think you should dress like you weigh 120 pounds. We're all a little chubby, but Rosie's just worse than most of us. And she attacked me because I gave Tara Connor, who was the Miss USA, everyone thought I'd fire her. And I saw how beautiful she was. Yes, I did. My people came to say, Mr. Trump, she has no experience. So I need to get her right. Do you have any experience? She goes, no, sir. I said, 
said, when did you start? I was watching a fashion show, and if you think I was looking at the dresses, you were wrong. <laughs> I was it's looking for what was inside of it. Talking about system. women. And you all gave more than my time any time. I mean, we could say politically correct that the look doesn't matter, but the look obviously matters. Like you wouldn't have your job if you weren't beautiful. It's very sad, isn't it? And they're sort of like you. They're smart. They're intelligent. In some cases, they're beautiful or good looking. If Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. I have more respect for a great homemaker as a wife than I do as a wife who's a good wife and a good business person, because in many respects I think it's tougher. Most women would agree with me. I think that putting a wife to work is a very dangerous thing. If you're in business for yourself, I really think it's a, a bad idea to put your wife working for you. Pregnancy is never, um, it's a wonderful thing for the woman, it's a wonderful thing for the husband, it's certainly an inconvenience for a business. Do you think she felt pressure? come back after three weeks? I don't think so. I think she loves her job. She wouldn't have felt a need to do that because you might have replaced her otherwise. No. Although it's an interesting premise. Maybe she should feel that way a little bit, but the fact is that would not have happened. Donna, what does Tiffany have of yours and what does Tiffany have of Mom's? She's got one of those legs. We don't know whether or not she's got this part yet, but time will tell. Ultimately, Ivana does exactly as I tell her to do. <laughs> <laughs> See, wait a minute. You Right, man, is that right? Uh. I mean, I've really given a lot of women great opportunity. Unfortunately, after their star, the fun is over for me. It's like a creation process. It's almost like creating a building. It's pretty sad. Your trumpet, the one that you guys love so much as putting women in, his, in their place. Love Trump, don't you? Go and support him, you're racist. You can sit up there and say about business all day long. Just like um, I talk about the, uh, the African Americans trying to promote him too. They're ignorant. They're unconscious. They think that this guy is going to help America. What he said, want to make America great again. Let me tell you something about making America great again. They only saying that is because of pre um, President um, Obama ran this country for eight years. And they want to take it back to 1861. That's their problem. They pissed off because a black man ran this country for eight years and ran it damn good without the two houses helping him. Ran it good. Excellent. So you hate, you just hate. I don't care what Obama have done. That He's on my bad side anyway. But. I don't care what he have done. He did amazing jobs without getting the two houses helping him. But I don't care what he have done. You guys will talk about him like no tomorrow. You will talk about him like no tomorrow. You don't care. You just up, you, you all you uh, 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 want to blame everything, everything, everything that happened through century of time, you want to blame it on that one black president. <laughs> oh, Lord, that one black president. That's all you want to do. Blame it on a white black people. Guess what? This country was ran by all white men till eight years ago. So stop trying to uh, 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 put all that on that one black president, that one African-American president. You can't do that. You can't do that at all. I know you want to. I know you want to, but you can't sit up there and blame all what happened and what's going on in America on that one black president. Hell no. Yeah, let's go. No anonymous. Have a good day. So I hear all BG. Can't shake it loose, this the hate, the hate
clues. I'm here to break the loose and fight the devil, ain't no truth. Raising another level, shitting the devil, say the truth. And look them in his eye when the enemy's facing you. I can't shake it loose, this the hate that hate produced. I'm here to break the loose and fight the devil, ain't no truth. Raising another level, shake the devil, say the truth. And look them in his eye when the enemy's facing you. Life power! Stand up! Stand up for our right! Peace! You speak this language through violence with guns blazing. So what I'm saying, negotiating with Satan is to waste the time. You out your African mind. Don't make these devils pay for every single crime ever committed. Cat, if you did it, now it's time to die. I spray the ratchet, I blat it, no moving backwards. I'm sending bullets at crackers and all faggots. Forward is the most. Killing devils on different levels, concocting potions to stop them from encroaching. On our way of life, I got it.